In the last episode, we saw how to store our counter model via local storage using ports. Today, we'll just implement the same thing, but for our ToDo MVC application. I've already brought the ToDo project up to the naive implementation you'd end up on after the previous episode. Let's walk through the changes really quickly. So I added a set model action, so you could set the model on the inbound local storage. I switched the update to return model effects action rather than just a model, and that's for startup. I switched from startup to startup simple, so main startup.start. I added storage mailbox and input output ports. So there's the storage mailbox and input and output ports. And then I added a todo.html file. Okie doke. So it's pretty similar to our previous episode on local storage. We'll also need to install Elm effects. So we'll Elm package install evancz Elm effects. And we're going to bring it in and we'll fix the start app import. So if you didn't notice, I was using start app simple. Also an import effects, exposing effects. So that should pretty much resolve everything. Um, however, there's a problem. So let's try to compile the code. I'm going to map. I like comma t to do the thing I want to do. So comma t will we'll try to compile this now. And we have a problem. Our problem is here. So let's let's read it a little bit. It says we're trying to send an unsupported type through an inbound port. So we have a signal of models and the model includes this filter state. And the problem is inbound ports can only take these types and filter state is a union type of our own devising. So basically we can't send this custom type through. So we could modify our model so that it used a string to store the state, but that's just being lazy. Instead, we'll send json.encode.values so you can see json.values can come through. So we use json.encode and json.decode to handle serialization and deserialization ourselves. So let's go ahead and open it up again. So we will need to bring in json.decode and we will expose this little operator. And so this is an operator that makes it easy to apply a decoder to a given field. We'll also import json.encode and we're gonna need task because we have effects. So we'll make our update send to storage mailbox after every mutation. I'm going to go through this very rapidly because it's very boring to watch me do this. Okay, so we store new model in our let and then we're going to send to storage mailbox new model. Okay, and we'll do the same for all the other actions. And we're not going to do this for update title because we don't care to store the current, the edited title in our local storage. And we don't need to do it down here. Okay, so now we should be sending the new model to the storage mailbox after every update. So also, I said we switched to start app, but our app is actually a bit off. So if we look at main, this should actually be the app with start app, and then main would be the signal of the app's HTML. All right. So now we'll define how to encode our model to json.encode values. So we'll define an encode JSON function. It takes a model into JSON encode value. So it takes a model. And it's a JSON object, so we'll encode an object. And as a list of fields, so we send a list in. The todos field, we're going to encode a list. And we're just going to map through this encode to do function that we'll define just a little bit later all of the models to do's. For the to do field, we'll use that same function for the model's current to do. For the filter field, we'll use a new function called encode filter state on the model's filter. And for the next identifier, we'll just encode it as an int. Okay, and so now we need to define encode to do. It takes a to do into JSON encode values. And it too is an object with a list of fields. So the title is a string completed as a bool.
editing is a bool, and identifier is an int. The filter state function, filter state encoder function, sorry, encode filter state, takes a filter state and turns it into a JSON encoded value. And we'll have a case statement here. If it's all, we'll encode all as a string. If it's active, we'll encode active. And if it's completed, we'll encode completed. And we could just as easily have used two string here, and I'm not sure why I don't. All right, so we'll need to modify map storage input. So rather than taking a model in, it's going to take a JSON decode value in. And we're just going to set the model to the initial model for now. So get some model JSON in, and we just ignore it for now. Ultimately, we'll need to decode the inbound JSON, but that's for later. Okay, so the storage mailbox is no longer a mailbox of models. It's a mailbox for JSON encode values. And the initial value will just encode the initial model to JSON. Sending to the storage mailbox now just needs to encode the model to JSON. So we will encode JSON on our model. Before sending it out the port, everything else stays the same. Our input port is no longer an input signal of models, but a JSON decode values. And our output port is no longer a signal of model, but it's a signal of JSON decode values. I really think they should be encode values, actually. Let me just try that. And then we also need tasks. And that'll be our apps tasks port. Okay, so with that, we should be effectively encoding our model to JSON. I'm going to come out of full screen mode. And we will serve the directory up and see what's happening. So if we refresh. Okay, so we provide an argument name storage input, but there's no corresponding port. Let me actually recompile. Sorry about that. And I have a syntax error. Line 287. Oopsie, didn't close that. All right, try to compile again. 297, same deal. Okay, so now it compiled, so let's go ahead and have a look. And something's happening here. So um, let's go ahead and have a look. Local storage dot get item to do. And it's, it's almost working, right? Um, it's trying to encode it, but when we actually store it in local storage, we are not serializing it to JSON, so it's getting object object. So let's go ahead and clear that out and call local storage clear. And now if we come to 2.html, we can just json.stringify our data on the way out to local storage. Okay, so let's try it again, and we'll refresh. And if we look at the to-dos, we actually have stuff being stored. Okay, so that works for storing. So now all that's left is to load the model into the application on load. The problem we have is that we don't presently know how to decode the JSON back into our model. So it's all pretty easy. Um, if we look at the HTML, you can actually see that we are presently, when we boot up, sending in the current model from local storage into the storage input port. So to actually turn that into our model, we come in here, we have the storage input port. And it's being mapped. Anytime an input comes in, it's going through map storage input. And of course, we're setting it to our initial model. What we want to do is decode the model JSON and set model to that. So since we're going to be decoding JSON, it could be malformed or otherwise inappropriate. So the json.decode functions return a result type. So that can be either OK model or error string. So if we get an error, we're going to send a no op. So let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So we'll case statement on decode model on the JSON. And if it's an OK, then we'll set model to the model. Otherwise, and this would be an error, we'll just set it to no op. So our map storage input stream of actions will ultimately just be a stream of no ops for invalid JSON. OK, so the actual decode function that we're going to use here needs to look something like this. 
it takes a JSON decode value and it returns a result. And the result can either be an OK model or an error string. So that's what's happening here. So decode model, the function definition takes model JSON and it'll call JSON decode decode value. And for this you handle you hand it a decoder function and the JSON to decode. So this brings us to the decoder function. So we're going to make a function called model decoder that returns a decoder for a model. So model decoder returns a JSON decode oopsie. Model decoder returns a JSON decode decoder for a model. And so we use the JSON decode. Now what's going to happen here is we're going to get a JSON object that has four keys in it. And so there is a handy function called object4 that takes an object with four keys and applies the decoded values to a function that you define. We're going to provide the model constructor function here that the record alias type produced for us. But this can be any for arity function. So for the to do's field, we're going to return a list. So we're going to decode that into a list. And we're going to pass that through the to do decoder. For the to do field, so this is the active to do, we'll just use the to do decoder. For the filter field, we're going to pass it through a filter state decoder. And for the next identifier, we're going to pass it through JSON decode int, just using the built-in. Okay, so we've talked about a to-do decoder. It is a JSON decoder for to-dos. So it is also an object with four keys. Pass it through the to-do function. And our title is just a string. Completed as a bool. Editing as a bool. And identifier is an int. Okay, so now all that's left is the filter state decoder. So for this, we have to break out a custom decoder because there's no other straightforward way to provide switching on a case statement. So we'll have a filter state decoder. And it's just a decoder for filter states. So we'll use a let here to provide a case statement. So decode to filter state takes a string. And if the string is all, it will return. Here we have to return a result.ok all because all of these custom decoder functions need to return a result. So if it's any of the things we know about, we'll just decode them as you would expect. If it's anything else, we'll return an error. Pull this over one. And then the actual body of this function will be calling custom decoder. And we get a string, and we pass it through decode to filter state. And this ultimately returns our result of filter states. OK, so might have been confusing, might not have been. But this all should work and should be sufficient to decode the data coming from the browser. So let's recompile. And of course, I have an error. So identifier json.decode int. I left off a period. There we go. Sorry about that. Compile it. And everything worked. So let's go ahead and check it out in the browser now. So we'll refresh. And already you can see that it remembered our state from before. And so we can complete some things and we'll go up here and refresh and our state came back from local storage just like we wanted of course it's storing all of our model state so that includes things like what filter state we happen to be in and it just works okay so in today's episode we saw how to use features from the JSON encode and JSON decode modules to implement custom JSON storage for our model via local storage it shouldn't be difficult for you to generalize from this to how you would deal with custom JSON for some arbitrary API endpoint I hope you learned something useful. See you soon.